the computer. And then everyone has to accept the recording if they if it pops up. Yep. Okay. Hi, Katie. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Hello. <laughs> Okay, I'll go on us. video in a second. Okay, awesome. Oh, good. Kayla's joining. Tawana's joining. Yay. Yeah. All right. Let everybody in. Okay, so we are rolling and we are recording. So let me go ahead and officially um, open the meeting and welcome everyone. Hey, Kayla, there's your face. <laughs> this is going to be awesome. Yes, it is. It, is. it absolutely is. Um, whew. Okay, let me get rid of this participant block out of the middle of my face here. There we go. All right. Welcome, women of God. And um, this is uh, going to be a very informative and um, exciting uh, time together on this Zoom. Y'all, excuse me if I have to pause and let people in. Good morning, Tawana. We're excited that you're here. Yeah. Um, and would you, Daryl, would you mind to unmute and open us in prayer real quickly? If you would ask me to do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just, it's, the mute button keeps running away from me, but yes, absolutely. Good morning, beautiful women of God. Let's go before the Father. Lord, we just give you praise and glory for who you are, for how intentional um, and how focused on even the smallest details you are, Father God. No one is like you. No one is greater. No one is wiser. No one is more loving and giving and intentional. No one is more just, Father God. We praise you. We just, we don't miss the opportunity to give you, give your name glory, to worship you, God. We invite you into this time with us, Father God. We thank you for how you have laid on our hearts a likeness and a sameness to want to advance the kingdom in this unique way. We thank you for Carla, for how you have chosen her to stand up in this time as a leader um, and to help uh, give her what's on your heart, that it would help us to connect even further to one another and to your heart, Father. We praise you and give you the glory that you have complete control in everything, and especially in this time together. It is in your name, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Um, let me um, just just say that, um, and I, I think if you've had a conversation with me, you've already heard me say this, I don't know it all. Um, I am simply the vessel who God used to spearhead this thing, but I am open to your prophetic insight, your personal experiential wisdom. Um, anything that you feel is on your heart to share, feel free to do so. Amen. Um, so that's that's it on my housekeeping. Um, we will give everybody a time for question and answers towards the end of this. I do actually have a written agenda. Um, I try to be organized when when we have these things, although, you know, when Holy Spirit starts moving, there ain't no telling. I yield to him. I come with a plan and, um, and an organized uh, plan of attack and a strategy. However, I yield to, to him. So um, that being said, let me introduce uh, first and foremost, uh, my, my right hand. Um, and that is Miss uh, Dara Jones, who is, um, I don't know, did we ever give you a title? Administrative <laughs> officer. Uh, <laughs> any you know no title. She, I think we don't need, I don't need a title because I think I need to remain a catch-all. <laughs> praise, praise the Lord. <laughs> you know, when God um, gives you a task and sends you help, it is a blessing above all blessings. And so this young woman has been uh, in my life for a number of years. She knows me um, and loves me anyway. And um, she helps me to stay on task, helps me to stay organized. Um, she is um, also a contact person um, and she will share her contact information. You can always reach out to her, but know that 
If you've already talked to me, you have my personal contact information. And if you do not, feel free to ask. I will gladly share that um, when we get towards the end. I actually think I have that on this agenda to do so. Um, but I did want to introduce her. And also um, my newest team member and, and my, my new uh, left ventricle, uh, that's Lynette Reganto, who has, we've just supernaturally been connected this year and she has come alongside and just been an absolute godsend to the building of this this vision and so um, most of you know her because most of you were introduced to me through her um, and so I thank God for her and I just wanted to say that publicly. Um, last night I had the opportunity to meet um, Kayla and Kayla has just jumped in and and started recruiting as well and i thank god for her oh my gosh when i tell you that these are such supernatural connections every single one of you that i have had opportunity to have a, a conversation with man we could have talked for three hours you know and and tried to you know, <laughs> you know we we've had some some powerful conversations um and just the sharing of our hearts and our gifts has already taken me to another place in my vision and in God. And so I thank him for each and every one of you. Peggy Foster, you've been on my heart all day. It was real hard for me to not uh, pull myself out of prayer this morning and call you. I really wanted to talk to you. So maybe we can chat after the, the Zoom. You've just really been on my heart real strong. Um, but anywho, I wanted to make sure that everyone has the website um, and is connected through that or either that or the Facebook page for Wailing to Warring Ministries. If not, um, please let myself or Dara or Lynette know so that we can invite you. I think it's a public page, but I think we have to invite people. Is that right? I think we have to invite you to. to yeah, we do. Okay. Um, I had to go back in and invite everybody. Um, okay. People that, that got, got missed. Okay. Um, and so that is going to be the easiest way for right now until, and, and unless somebody has a suggestion, I had thought about maybe having a separate private group page for um, state delegates for the leaders um, just so we have a, a centralized place to keep in touch. I personally despise group text messaging. I think it is one of the most invasive and most annoying things anybody can do. So I will not spam your, your text messages. If you get a text from me, it'll be directly from me. It won't be a group, a group text, you know, because invariably people answer those things and you're, you're busy, you're working, you know, you're doing all kinds of stuff. So um, I just, I, I will not do that. I had thought about a group me, um, but I don't know that that's really any better than a group text. It's just a group text in another format. And just one more thing to try to keep up with. I think most of us are on Facebook. Those of us who are not, um, we can communicate you know, directly through text. I know Kayla, you, you're not a big Facebooker, but um, you know, we can text and have been. So that's, that's absolutely fine. I just want you all to know I'm totally accessible. Um, I'm big on texting um, because I find that I can be extremely chatty. And when I connect heart to heart with somebody, Ain't no telling when we're getting off the phone. So I tend not to do a whole lot of telephone calling because of that, um, because I know we're all busy women. I, I'm just in, in communicating with several, several of you. I know that um, most of us are doing more traditional ministry, but also ministering in our marketplace positions. And so we, you know, we're wives, we're, we're mothers, we're grandmothers, we're, you know, sisters and aunts and mentors, and we've got all these hats. So um, we'll, we'll keep in touch as succinctly and, you know, try to keep it in its, in its rightful place, um, but stay in, in touch. Amen. So if anybody has any um, thoughts on that, please feel free to, uh, to chime in, make suggestions. 
um, in the interim, everything that is uh, pertinent, I try to keep that website updated at all times. Um, and everything that I put on the group page will also be echoed on the website. Um, the website is uh, www.wailingtowarring.com. And um, Dara, if you'll share that in the chat to everyone, that would be great. Wailingtowarring.com and the Facebook page is Wailing to Warring Ministries. Um, if you have not been invited to it, let's, let us know so that we can make sure that we invite you. Um, is there anybody here who has not heard the vision? Charla, we have not had a conversation, so perhaps um, you and I have not talked. I think I've had conversations with everyone else. Yeah, I didn't think you had. So let me just briefly um, share the vision. Um, it came from the Lord a couple of years ago, 2021. Um, this particular verse of scripture came in front of me, and I think it was the verse of the day on my Bible app, and it was Jeremiah 9, verses 17 through 20. Um, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider ye, and this is the King James Version, consider ye and call for the mourning women, that they may come, and send for cunning women, that they may come, and let them make haste and take up a wailing for us, that our eyes may run down with tears and our eyelids gush out with waters. For a voice of wailing is heard out of Zion. How are we spoiled? We are greatly confounded because we have, found, we have forsaken the land because our dwellings have cast us out. Yet hear the word of the Lord, O ye women, and let your ear receive the word of his mouth and teach your daughters wailing and everyone her neighbor lamentation. Now, when I heard that, or when I read it, one of my, um, Derek, could you share the scripture reference on there in the chat for me too, please? Jeremiah 9, 17 through 20. Um, when I heard, when I, when I read it, you know, I hear it in my head. And um, one of my spiritual mothers, I've heard her read this several times. And when she read, when she says it, that line about your eyelids gushing with water, she doesn't say gush, she says gush. And so I, in my head, I heard gush, your eyelids gush out with water. And I got tickled because I was hearing her voice. And, um, you know, and I was at work, I was going about my day. And a second time, just randomly, at some point in the day, that scripture came back before me. Now God had my attention. And I was thinking, okay, God, what are you talking about? What is, you know, why a second time? That was not a coincidence. I didn't see it as one. I felt, I felt his presence in it. And um, so I was kind of waiting to hear him elaborate well, I was driving home and I got a phone call from a dear brother uh, in the Lord who is a prophet. And I really was debating on whether or not to answer the phone because he, he he's real chatty. I, I don't know any prophets that, uh, that aren't terribly chatty, especially the guys. And so I, I usually have to kind of weigh, am I gonna let this, am I gonna let his phone call go to voicemail and I'll call him back later? Or am I gonna listen? And I just felt like, mm, let me answer the phone. So I answered and he said, sis, I hear the Lord speaking a, a scripture over you. And I, I feel like I need to read it over you. And I thought to myself, if he says something about Jeremiah 9, I'm going to have to pull my car off the road. <laughs> and he said, it's from Jeremiah. It's the one about the wailing women. And I thought, oh, Lord, OK, let me pull over. So I pulled over in a parking lot and I let him read this scripture. And I just felt the presence of God. And he said, I think you're supposed to take this literally. I really think that God is calling you to gather women together to cry out. <laughs> And, and to pray with one voice. And, and it really bore witness with my spirit. So when I got home, I pulled away in my prayer room and I began to pray into it and I had a vision. And I saw women like this sea of women in these red t-shirts with this gold on it and blue. And it, it had this Wonder Woman vibe to it. And I thought, 
that's really cool. You know, Wonder Woman, Wailing Women, this whole WW thing. And um, so we started making plans. I'm sure I probably called Dara next and, and shared it with her, you know, and we began to make plans. God began to give me the faces of those who would stand with me and um, make these declarations and decrees and would pray with me. And I began to actually, you know, reach out and uh, and contact them. And every single one of them said yes. Um, I did not feel led to have to give them their prayer topic. I wanted them to seek God and get it straight from him. And um, when they did, I asked them, when you get it, let me know. And I'm going to start making a list of what we're going to be praying about. And as that happened, there was no overlap. Everybody had their specific topic and everybody was anointed for that topic. And so I was excited, but I thought because we had just had Sean Foyt here in our city and they had had this beautiful gathering, one of his Let Us Worship events, and it was at the Arkansas River. And I've always been drawn to the river. I thought that that was where we were to have this gathering. And so the, the young man who is a good friend of mine who facilitated that, I met with he and his wife um, to find out the logistics and, you know, who do I need to contact in the city to secure that land and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And um, at the time, and I work in the beauty industry, at the time, the salon that I was working from was two blocks from our state capitol. So I took the capital exit every single day um, going to work. But this one particular day in the planning process, as I came off that exit, it was as though the Capitol building just swelled up and took up my whole entire windshield. And I thought, oh, my God, we're supposed to do this at the Capitol. You know, like I said, I don't have all the pieces. I'm just obedient to move when God says move. And so. I didn't realize at the time that it was supposed to be at the Capitol, but I reached out to one of um, our senior team members who was one of our prayer leaders, um, Dr. Lalita Smith. And when I told her, Doc, we're not supposed to do this at the river. We're supposed to do this at the Capitol. She just laughed and said, I've just been waiting for God to tell you. I've known it since you first asked me to be a part of this. And so we switched gears. Um, we had one of our team members, uh, one of our prayer leaders, as a matter of fact, is Dr. Judy Laird. She's one of my um, prophetic mentors. I've been in, we've been in each other's lives for over 20 years. And um, she said, there's something about the 21st step. I need you to go to the Capitol. Call me when you get there. And, um, oh, good, you know, I'm a red. <laughs> I should have known. I should have asked you that last night, Kayla. Um, and so, I asked, I mean, she asked me to call her when we got there and then count the steps up the front of the state capitol. When I did, the 21st step is actually a platform. It's a landing. And so I knew that that would be where we would stand and make these decrees. And um, man, we could get into all of the significance of numbers and all of that stuff. But that was a very powerful gathering. Um, we had... Um, we had quite a good turnout uh, and we watched God answer every one of those prayers. Um, Dr. Lolita Smith chronicled this whole thing, created this binder that has become kind of a referral point back for us to all of the prophetic words that have been decreed over the state of Arkansas for us to kind of go back to and pray into. Um, all of that. So we have we have documentation of of the things that that took place for that first one. And I thought my job was done until last year when out of the blue, the Lord said, I want you to reprise. He used the word reprise. I want you to reprise the Wailing Women's event of last year. And so in my little finite mind, I wanted to be certain that I knew what he meant. I looked up the word to be certain I knew it meant to repeat a thing. And so I thought, okay, we did it the first Saturday in June at 6 a.m. That was a done deal. First Saturday of June, 6 a.m. We had 12 prayer leaders. We'll do 12 prayer leaders. We stand on the 21st step at the state capitol. You know, I thought I had all of these things in a row. We'll wear those red t-shirts. And as soon as I thought that, I had a vision. 
And it was an army of women that looked like they were growing up out of the ground like trees. And they had on war clothes was camo and army green. And, and the Lord said, this is the army of women spoken of in Psalm 68, 11. And I don't know if you can see my shirt, but this is a kind of a replica of the shirts we wore last year. This was what they looked like army. And it said Psalm 68, 11, and it had our, our wailing women's logo on the back. Um, this one here that I've had done, and I, I think we'll probably kind of do this this year. I have the state of Arkansas's flag on one arm and the American flag on, on the other sleeve. And I think that's probably what we will do um, this year as far as the shirts that we'll have done. So yes, we will have merch as well. We'll have t-shirts. Everybody can order. My, um, my t-shirt producing woman is right here. She's fast and she's local and we can ship, you know, to your perspective states. Um, and I'm thinking we might want to do them like this with your state flag on one sleeve and um, and the American flag on the other. So at any rate, that's the vision in a nutshell. Um, we did have three other states who joined in with us last year, Arizona, Louisiana, and Pennsylvania. And at that time, I was amazed that these women wanted to join forces with us. And then the Lord spoke next year, all 50 states. And so that is where we are right now. Our time frame has shifted. Obviously, we're not doing it the first Saturday in June. God said this year during the feasts, the fall feasts on the Hebrew calendar. And so we actually are meeting on Saturday, September the 16th, which is Rosh Hashanah, the beginning oh. of the new year on the Hebrew calendar. I, 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 that's, that's a whole nother part of the story. So at any rate, just know that that is when this event will take place. I woke up this morning um, with a thought. Um, we have been meeting here in Arkansas and we're central, we're central time zone um, at 6 a.m. Um, and everybody was thinking, oh my gosh, are we all supposed to meet at 6 a.m.? You know, in California, that's going to be four o'clock in the morning. That doesn't sound real doable. But what if we did this? What if we shifted our start time to 8 a.m. Central? That would be 6 a.m. on the West Coast. And it would be, you know, um, what, nine on the, am I right? Yeah, yeah, it'd be it'd nine a.m. here on the, on the east, on the east coast. Yeah. Okay. So what if we did that, and that way we actually could, um, all be praying at the same time, as opposed to, you know, it being scattered throughout the day. And that was my first thought was, oh, because of the different time zones, you know, everybody can just pick their time, and as long as it's on the same day. But how powerful would it be if we were? honestly lifting up a unified voice all at the same time. And so I think that would give us the opportunity to do that. <laughs> if we shift our start time to eight um, here in the central part of the States, that's going to mean early birds on the, on the West coast, you know, it's doable, <laughs> you know, it's one day, we did it. We've done it for two years in a row. And we probably still will, will meet a little earlier than that. We will just start prayer at eight because this year I feel led to have worship before. Um, I've already been talking to worship leaders who will come and, you know, and join us and, um, and do worship. So we could do that from seven to eight here in the central uh, time zone and, um, and actually start prayer at eight. What, what 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 say ye? What what do y'all think? Anybody on that on that uh, Pacific time on on the call? Is it is there anybody on here that's that's out west? I think I think Katie's the one. Uh, Katie, the what are you on Mountain Time? You're muted. Unmute, babe. Oh, it's just one hour from Central Time, two hours from East Coast. 
Oh, so, okay. okay, so she'd be seven o'clock. Okay. I'd be seven as well. You'd be seven. Okay, so Callie would be six. Six, yeah. You know, that's so funny that you said that because this morning I was going to reach out to you, but we were all trying to get ready. And then I had a, I have a plumber here and all kind of other stuff going on. But um, yeah, that's what the Lord's been speaking to me too, is worship first. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm totally in agreement with that. Awesome. Awesome. How's that sound, y'all? Sound good? What do you think, Kayla? You're unmuted. Are you talking to me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I think it's good. I think one of the things... Um, it's people that are dedicated. I think. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh oh, you froze up. Draw like you're gonna come at seven a.m. that early, and so I think that that's really a good <laughs> thing because you're getting people that are strategic and they truly are dedicated to the cause, and they're gonna they're gonna go for it. So I like it. Amen. Awesome. And I'll tell you, it is beautiful. You get to watch the sunrise and, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's been a beautiful, peaceful, you know, transition into it every year when we've met at 6 a.m. It's been, it's been great. It really has. It's been a blessing. And then, you know, you've, you've done the work and, and then it's time to, it's time to go have breakfast, you know? So that'd be a fun, you know, thing to do with your team <laughs> no break bread and you know yeah okay awesome awesome I don't know why I didn't think of that before today but I woke up with that so thank you holy ghost um so our next um love it next thing is um Lynette do you have with you the the list of confirmed states if not I can read it off the map Well, not just read it off the map since I got it right here. Okay, great. Yeah, because I I have the states we still need, but I don't have the confirms. Okay. So we have confirmed Oregon, California, Utah, um, New Mexico, Colorado, South Dakota, Texas, Missouri, Illinois, Arkansas, Louisiana. Florida, Georgia, North and South Carolina, Kentucky, Ohio, Michigan, New York, Pennsylvania, Virginia, uh, who is that? Delo and Delaware and Maryland. So we have none of the um, New England states and I personally don't have any connections in the New New England states. We have, uh, you know, some like right in the center of the nation that are still missing. And then a couple of the Southern states, Alabama and Mississippi um, being in the- I just south. got Mississippi confirmed for you. Oh, yay! She, well, I say confirmed. She says she feels like it's the Lord. She wants to do it. It's Apostle Melissa Mapp but she was going to check her schedule because okay. she, she does, she just wanted, I mean, she said she's pretty sure she has nothing. We just got off the phone before the meeting. Okay. Awesome. So, awesome. So we'll, we'll, we'll look to hear back on that one, but, but okay. that's pretty yeah. positive. That she's, she's in, she just wants to confirm on her calendar. Make sure she's clear. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. And then, so that would just leave Alabama as far as the Southern region. Um, we still need Arizona, Nevada. Did we say we had Washington? Or, or I somebody, contacted someone yesterday for Washington. Washington. Okay, so we still but Washington. He still hasn't open. responded yet. Yeah. Okay, so Washington State is still open. So Lynette, I have to say something. The same person Lynette contacted for Washington, I did as well. Oh, wow. <laughs> tell me that's not the holy ghost yeah, yeah right so that's not confirmation to you i don't know what is sister okay okay and so, then um so oklahoma, what's our hold up <laughs> right i'm pretty sure oklahoma's coming on board i tagged her this morning but she probably couldn't get on the uh zoom okay. so i'm pretty sure we have oklahoma okay awesome so I'm that waiting oh go ahead oh you already got south dakota 
Mm -hmm. uh, North Dakota. Mm, not yet. Okay. No, it's not okay. looking good for North Dakota. And then okay. um, Illinois, or no, Idaho. Did you get Idaho? Mm -mm. No, let me just read the ones that we don't have. Okay. okay, so it's Washington, Idaho, Nevada, Arizona, Montana, Wyoming, North Dakota, Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin, you know, so that's that's all of that mid to, to western region. The only one left down down south, if if this sister says yes for Mississippi, will be Alabama. Um, we still need Indiana covered. We had a maybe for Indiana. We've got West Virginia still is is empty. Um, and then all of New England. So we have New York, but we don't have Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Vermont, you know, Maine, um, those, those, those New England, that whole little New England cluster up there is, is empty. So we're calling them in. Oh, and don't let me forget because they're not on the continent, uh, Hawaii and Alaska. We still need Hawaii and Alaska as well. I'm a friend of mine that was in Hawaii that was living there. I think she's moved back to the, to to Texas. Oh wow! But she knows plenty of people, so she should be getting with me. Okay, awesome, awesome. So I ask you, sisters who are on here, who do you know? Who do you know? You know, if you know someone in one of those regions that were mentioned, and we can get you those those um, states as a list if you need them. Um, if you know somebody, please feel free to reach out to them and feel free to give them my contact information if they'd like to talk to me, you know, and hear it straight from the horse's mouth, so to speak. Um, but at this point, it's a team effort. You know, I knew going into this that I did not know. Yes, I'll, we'll post those. Um, where can, how can we easily get them? I'll just I'll just make the list Dawn and I'll I'll uh I'll send it to you. Okay. Um so we'll we'll do that. We'll get that list to you. Um and anybody else who would like that list, please feel free to um to say so and we'll just we'll just text it to you. That way you'll have it. Um but this is a, a joint venture at this point. You know, I I knew going into this that I did not know people in all 50 states. And surely I looked at some of these places and I thought, how in the world, like Utah, okay? <laughs> how in the world, I don't know anybody in Utah, you know? And um, so so it's God, it's it's all God's doing. It's, it's his thing, you know? So he's kind of obligated to, to bring it to pass. And that's how I look at it. So when I speak to this map every day, I lay hands on this map and I talk to it and I tell it, you know, to come alive, to, to bring forth, you know, everything that God has decreed and declared over it. And um, what he has spoken is that this army of women that is arising, we are his secret weapon for this nation. We are his secret weapon for turning this nation around. And so... Um, I just believe it. We have we have watched him move here in in our state, and if he can move here, he can move anywhere. And in talking to you all, the challenges that each of our states face are varied and daunting, but certainly no match for an overcomer like our God. So, you know, we being his warrior women in this hour, we take up the gauntlet and we enter this thing without fear, you know, and um, and, and we, we position ourselves from victory. You know, we, we take this fight on from the position of victory. We're not fighting to victory, we're fighting from victory. And so, I'm excited. I'm excited about each and every one of you. I'm excited for the women who even have not been able to join us here this morning, but will join us in um, our forthcoming meetings. But believe me, 
the caliber of women that that he is bringing together um, for this time together is is amazing, amazing. I'm I, I, I keep stammering, you know, because I, I'm I'm a little bit overwhelmed and um and certainly excited, but I just can see what God is doing. And it's funny because when Kayla and I were talking yesterday evening, um, we were talking a lot about Esther and we were talking about this um, this Esther season that, that we find ourselves in. And I've heard that spoken by several, several prophetic voices, but for decades, God has had me preparing Esther's. And so um, I am... I'm so I'm so excited about what God is doing. Um, before we close out, I want to give us a little time for questions and answers. Um, and before we close in prayer, I have something that I want to play um, in your hearing. There is um, a, a the brother that I told you is chatty and um, <laughs> and confirmed this original vision um, with calling me and speaking Jeremiah 9, 17 through 20 over me. Years back, he did a CD called Wealth of the Kingdom. And I had totally forgotten about this, this CD until I got a text from him yesterday and he mentioned it. And so I looked back on my um, iTunes library to find it because it's been years since I even thought about it, let alone played it didn't really remember anything about it, but um, it is so for right now that it's blowing my mind. And I knew that I had physical CD still, you know, all, all of my CDs are like all the good stuff is all, all loaded on my iTunes library. You know, everything's digital now. We don't pull out CDs and stuff very often. So I, but I never got rid of my CDs. I have them all boxed and they're in my storage room here, you know, out off of my carport. And so I knew that I had a copy of that CD. Well, turns out I used to sell them for him at my day spa. So I had several unopened, still wrapped in the plastic, I think I had four copies. Matter of fact, he doesn't even have one. I'm going to send him one. Um, and so I pulled it out. And as I looked at the, um, the, the list of the, they're not really songs. There's music, but they're decrees. They're people speaking. Um, there's one called Esther's Grace. And I want to play that in your hearing because women of God, when I tell you there is something on that. I'm just going to let this stuff play in my house all day today, this whole CD. Um, it is so powerful and so anointed. And it is it was so ahead of its time. He released this in 2008. And this is 2023. So I don't know how many years that is ago, but quite a few. And um, this when I played this Esther's Grace, it was as though this woman was speaking it prophetically right now. So before we get off of here, um, I'm, I will play that in your hearing. It's about three minutes or so uh, long, but I'm gonna open the, the floor for questions. 15 years, 15 years, wow. Yeah. I wow. do wanna say as a housekeeping before, because I don't want to interject this at the end and break what's about to fall, because <laughs> I feel it. I saw the chat going, we all feeling it. Um, I do want to say this. Please, please, please. Um, I did early on in the chat, if you just could just uh, scroll back up to it, ladies, please grab my contact information. I want to compile a contact list. I know that, Carla, you probably have one, but I want to prepare one. And then that can be something that can be shared out amongst us. And then also it'll help me to create an additional file that is pinpointing each leader to each state, if you don't already have that, Ms. Carla. Um, so please, ladies, you can text me, you can email me. Um, if you text me, I'm usually much quicker to respond to text messages and emails rather than if you were to give me a phone call. Um, so definitely, I just want to make sure that you guys grab that as a housekeeping point so that we can start compiling what we have and what we need. Amen. Thank you for that. 
Could you put it in again? I'm sorry. I was late getting in because I just found out about this 10 minutes ago. I was out of my house. Okay. And I'll go ahead and drop it back in. Thank you so much. Awesome. Okay, so the floor is open. Feel free to unmute if you have any questions, comments, feedback. Um, love to hear from you. Anyone? Anyone? Don't everybody speak at once. <laughs> Did you see we got Hawaii? No. <laughs> Apostle Grace Cruz has been messaging me. Um, she's in Houston now, but she has her team in Hawaii. She said she has a really strong uh, intercessor. So she's going to be connecting me with whoever it is from her team in oh, Hawaii. Um, awesome. That's what I'm talking about. I'm putting her name. So it's Grace, Grace Cruz's team member, and she's going to send me all the information. Okay, awesome. Because she has, still has a ministry in Hawaii. She's just not living there anymore. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you, thank you. Come Ooh. on, Jesus. Yes, indeed. I mean, he's doing this thing, you guys. We're we're over halfway there. So I'm, I'm super excited. Super. I am too. And you know what? I love the way that the Lord, as I was praying over the map and all of a sudden, I was like, Utah, wait a minute. Kayla moved to Utah. And just the way that the Lord brought it all together um, and you two knowing each other, I mean, no, having mutual friends and everything else. I think that's, you know, just the way that the Lord is bringing the quality of women that he's bringing on board is such, um, I'm blown away by it, honestly. And I'm just super excited. Dawn, I'm super excited to have you, Charla, um, Carolyn, everybody. Tawana, everybody. I'm just Katie, everybody. So, and there's a lot of people that couldn't be here today too. Um, it's Saturday morning. Okay. It is. And, <laughs> you know, I just, I'm just super grateful to be a part of it. I really am. Amen. So. Amen. <laughs> Look likewise. <laughs> me too. Cause I was praying, Lord, why did you send me to Utah? <laughs> I've been here a year. What is happening? And literally the night before you messaged me, Lynette. So it was totally the Lord. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Anybody else before I play this? Thank you, mighty women of God. This is such an answer to prayer. I'm very close to many prophetic um, apostolic leaders in Kentucky and Tennessee. And um, so I don't know if you all have ever heard of Gina Goldston, but She's kind of in the realm with Dutch Sheets and Tim Sheets and um, my apostle, uh, my spiritual father, um, his spiritual father is Dutch Sheets. So he teaches us very closely. And Gina, uh, I met her about five years ago. She's, she has a lot of words. The Lord's brought her in for the nation. And there was a word released. I'll get it to you, Carla. And awesome. then I'll leave it to your discretion as to release the word, pray over the word. But it is for the United States. And it is a very prophetic on-time word. This is that that she saw in February. And it we you all hear it and and read it so i'm pulling i'm asking her to really and, and she she's seeking the lord right now even though she lives in tennessee and she's a tennessean she the lord uses her in the entire region and across the nation but she has a huge heart for kentucky too so i'm asking her and she doesn't have anything right now pressing in september but she has to hear from the lord if that's you know what he wants her to do so um but i will be able to release the word and this word is just it's fire and it's the holy ghost he is America shall be saved. And it's not going to be maybe like we think, but God is in the midst of this. And if we'll just rise up and we'll believe him and trust him and go and do and release our supplies together, this nation will turn and the gospel of the Jesus Christ will go forth from America to every nation in the world. That is God's original covenant for this nation. Yes. And we declare it to be so. And so I'm so grateful 
grateful and honored to be with this caliber of women who are just releasing their fetters and going forth. You know, God is going to do it. And I believe every state will be represented at this, you know, on September 16th. I'm going to begin calling them in state by state. And Lord, you know, we're going to come together and do this. This is a team thing we cannot lose. The captain of the Lord's army is leading us. He never lost a battle and he never will. So thank you, ladies, for everything you're doing. Thank you, Jesus. Dawn, thank you. <laughs> Woo, I felt the fire of God on that word. Lord you see Lord. why? Look, she was the first face God showed me for my team. He's like, he's like, I was like, Lord, who am I going to get? I don't even know if I know 12 women in Kentucky, really. And he was like, boom, Dawn. And I was like, all right, Lord. All right. Oh, you know, just woo. Woo. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I kid you not. I can't wait to hear this word. Please get it to me, Dawn, because I can't wait. Now I'm all on fire. <laughs> yeah, me too. Katie said she's glad this was recorded. Me too. Girl, I usually forget. I had to write it in my notes. I had to send Dara a note. Please don't let me forget to record this because I'm terrible. I'm I'm excited and I'm ready to just go for it. And I'll forget in a heartbeat to, for, to turn on the recording. So yes, thank God we're recording it. But I'm gonna play this. So let me let me turn it on because I'm gonna play it from my phone and I'm I wanna make sure y'all can hear it. So Lynette, unmute and just say yes if you can hear it. Okay. All right. Prophetess Esther Sorter speaking to you today from the book of Esther. In the book of Esther, we it? see five yeah. keys to global transformation through kingdom economics, the king's rule of material wealth. God had a plan for his royal seed to be preserved so that the Messiah could finally come to restore man's dominion. Satan would have had his way in the destruction of the seed, but God works even among the heathen to fulfill his will. In Esther 2.15, it says that she won favor, Esther won favor in the sight of all who saw her. She had learned how to obtain favor by having a spirit of submission to her adopted father, Mordecai, when her Jewish father and mother were taken during a siege. Mordecai was taken to the Persian palace to serve. No doubt, he taught Esther not to hold on to bitterness or loss, but to have a fragrant attitude that would attract hmm. favor. Mordecai became the father that equipped her to take kingdom dominion in any situation that she found herself. Declare with me, Father, we thank you for raising up Mordecai to father the orphaned, those left to debt, those ravaged with loss, stolen birthrights, and broken covenant. We declare restoration of all good things. Now, there was a contest for choosing a new queen. She had a year of purification, of soaking in the oils and perfumes to loosen the old and to cleanse, sharpen, and to polish to the inmost part of her heart her affections that were associated with God's emotions. Say with me again, we declare the old attitudes and old mindsets are being soaked in the oil of Holy Spirit, and we are moving past all old barriers and obstacles that have stood in our way in the past to move forward. We are cleansed, we're sharpened, and we're polished. Then the maiden came to the king. She obtained favor. She obtained grace in the king's sight, and he set the royal crown on her head. Suddenly, you find yourself in the palace, promoted on your job, chosen for reward, thought unseen by others. Now, opposition arises. Jealousy over your position, over your promotion, yet you have not revealed your identity. Your Mordecai, meanwhile, unwilling to compromise and bowing to one he knows God has cursed, sends a message to Esther saying, don't flatter yourself thinking you'll escape the trouble coming. Mm -hmm. It could be that for such a time as this, you come into the kingdom. Declare with me, for such a time as this have I come into the kingdom. My promotion is for a reason. I will identify my enemy, this wicked adversary. 
mm, my boss has cancer. But I decree with God's authority, this atmosphere is a cancer-free zone. I will speak the word of the Lord and see him healed. I decree the destroyer is defeated. The Haman spirit that intended on hanging Mordecai was revealed as Esther made a choice to first fast three days along with her maidens, Mordecai and all the Jews. She needed strategy to keep her entire race from being wiped out. She took the attitude, if I perish, I perish, for no one goes before the king without being called. She knew what the king loved, and she adorned herself in the royal robes, and she believed that her heart would reach his heart when he beheld her. She stood at his entrance waiting. Now notice, she stood. She took her royal position in a spirit of humility, and she touched the extended scepter. Wow, there's that favor again. Surely her heart must have been leaping within. After preparing his favorite dinner along with his esteemed requested guest, Esther exposed the wicked plot of Haman, and the king said, Hang Haman on the gallows that he prepared for Mordecai. The king quickly exalted Mordecai, and he sent letters by messengers on horseback, riding on swift steeds, mules, bread from the royal stud, saying, Save these people. The Jews had a light, a dawn of new hope, and now there was gladness, and there was joy, and there was honor. Let's declare. There are messengers on swift steeds, bred from the royal stud that are carrying the message. They're saying God is accelerating our restoration and he's preserving the next three generations. Now is the time of acceleration and full restoration. Jesus. This is a season of celebration, a season that, Father God, you will display your governmental anointing through us. In Esther 10, 3, it says Mordecai the Jew was next to the king and great among the Jews and was a favorite with the multitude of his brethren, for he sought the welfare of his people and spoke peace to his whole race. So say along with me, thank you, Father, for Mordecai next to the king. Kingdom ventures, great among the covenant believers, because he seeks the welfare of his people, and he has spoken peace, nothing missing, nothing broken to his whole race. That's global transformation. Hmm. Wow. Wow. Wow is right. I just felt the presence of God so strong as I played that earlier. There were so many key things that that she declared. I just, um, wow. So Father, we thank you. I thank you for these, your daughters who have gathered together, Father God, who took heed to your voice, who answered the call, Father God, without reservation, Father. I thank you, Father God, that you would bless us with increased wisdom, Father, with increased stamina, Father God. We decree now the blood of Jesus covers us, covers yeah. us, Lord God, shields us, makes us invisible and impervious to the wiles of the enemy. Yeah. Father God, I thank you now that you would reveal your strategy state by state to each and every leading delegate, Father God, and that their teams would rally, Father God, come prepared, come ready, Father God, to take back this nation, to turn it, Father God, towards you. Huh. We thank you, Father God. We say your kingdom come, God, your will be done. In this nation, Father God, and Father, we thank you. We yield ourselves to your leading, Father God, and to your purpose and plan, Father, for this gathering, September the 16th. Father, we dedicate it to you. We understand that it is a turn of a new year on the calendar of God, on the timetable of the Hebrew calendar. Yeah. And God, we don't take it lightly. We know that there is something so symbolic about that, Father. 
And Lord God, I thank you. I lay down my own thoughts, my own will, my own agenda, Father God, and I pick up yours. Now, Father God, I ask you to strengthen each of us, give us ears tuned into the frequencies of heaven. Father God, give us eyes to see like those of the eagle. And God, I thank you now. I thank you for every one who you have ordained to be a part of this, to hear from heaven, to hear in the realm of the spirit, a clarion call so that God, like many of these who are gathered together today, Father, when they hear of this, they have an instant yes in their spirit, Father God, because you've already planted it from before time immemorial, God, in their heart. This assignment, God, it's your purpose, but it's our assignment. And so we thank you, Father God, for choosing us, for handpicking us, Father God, for being like, like the Esther's of this day, Father, the Deborahs of this hour, Father God. And I thank you for it, Lord God. I thank you that you anoint us afresh with fresh oil, Father, for this season and for this task. I thank you, Lord God. We decree and declare even now, Father God, victory, <laughs> victory, kingdom victory over the United States of America, Father God, and that it will flow from here beyond the borders of our states and our nation into the nations of the world, Father God. We do decree that along with many who have spoken it, Father God, America shall be saved. It shall be saved, Lord God. And we, we get to see it in our lifetime, Father. We thank you for it now, Lord God. I bless these women, Father God, and I bless those yet to come. I bless those who couldn't join us, Father God, but will hear this recording. Father God, we thank you now. We thank you now for what you've yet to for what we've yet to see you done because it's already done. It's already done. You always speak the end from the beginning, Father God. And so we're just catching up in time to those things which you have already decreed over this nation. Father, we thank you. Use us. We yield ourselves to you and we say, use us, God. Use us as you see fit. Use us in any capacity that you call for, for God. And I bless them now, Lord God. I thank you, Father, that you would continue to reach out to us by your spirit. And we pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. Well, ladies, I thank you so very much. Um, those of you who are um, leading delegates for your state, we will have separate um, Zoom meetings just for the leading delegates um, as we get a little closer. Um, and I will keep you informed as to as far in advance as I can. Um, more than likely, they'll be either on an evening or um, or on a Saturday morning. And so um, feel free to let me know, you know, what works best for everybody. I know we, we're all in different time zones and we all got crazy schedules and all that stuff. So I'll try to accommodate as much as possible. Amen. Um, amen. I know you said before on the last meeting that there was a list of topics, and I'm pretty sure that you gave a list of topics out besides whatever the Lord lays on our heart. Want me to say those real quickly? These were the things that um, in prayer um, came to um uh, a sister friend of mine from Arizona and myself, uh, as we prayed into this, um, these were topics that were general topics um, that he gave to us. And this is no, in no way an exhaustive list because your state has its own challenges. Right. Um, but number one was the shedding of innocent blood. And that, that included senseless violence. It includes abortion, um, you know, in any way that innocent blood is being shed in this nation. Um, the ecclesia arising, you know, that we become um, who we were created to be, the governing body in the earth um, as, as God's actual governmental body, the ecclesia, you know, that we would begin to really shift into that mindset 
and begin to arise and and not just say it when we're gathered together, but walk it out in our daily lives and in our understanding of how we deal with everything we encounter in the earth. Um, the synergy of the ages, um, that is something that on our, um, on our platform here in Arkansas, we have prayed into each year. Um, it is, I think, very important that yes. we, we call forth those things which have already been spoken and prayed into the earth. Those prayers have never left this earth. And so we join our faith with those prayers that have been prayed, those decrees that have been spoken um, in time before ours, um, that yes. we begin to operate as kings and priests in the earth. And that includes us women, that we are kings. It does not, in the book of Revelation, it does not refer to queens and priests. It does say kings. And that is a positional term, not a gender term. And so um, that we really shift into a mindset where we grasp hold of that. Um, the demolishing of old religious structures, and that includes um, sexism, you know, those who would uh, continue to stand against the truth of the word where it refers to, where in, in its reference to women and our position and our authority. Um, that we would be the ones who open the gates to our cities, our states, our regions. That was something God spoke to me the first year. Um, I, I mentioned that Sean Foyt had been here and that worship had gone forth and God said it unlocked the gates, but the voice of the women was what was going to push the gates open. Um, we pray for the next generation um, every year. Um, here in Arkansas, we actually have representation. We have a young woman who who prays and prays for her generation. I'm excited about the young woman who's going to be with us this year. Um, and God gave me a word, and and this is not to to be, you know, contrary to anybody's denomination or anything, but but He gave me a word that there is something very very powerful and very um, important about the assemblies of God in this next move of God. Now, I don't claim to know what that fully means, but he has brought it to me twice. And the second time he did, I was minding my own business on a Monday morning drinking coffee. And he visited me in my living room and he began to speak to me about the assemblies of God. And so um, I just ask you to not necessarily include that in your prayers for your state. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. However, I would I would ask you to pray into that as well, because there's there's something that God, um, there's there's something. I I don't claim to know what I, what all of that means, but it's come to me twice that there is something very pivotal and very important about the assemblies of God in this next move of God in this nation. Can I say something about that? Sure. Uh, okay, so when I got saved in 75, um, I got saved watching the 700 Club and they referred me to an assemblies of God, which was like a block and a half away from my house. I'd never seen it before and never heard of the denomination. So I fast forward. I, in the past 37 years, have pastored at a non-denominational church, but the Lord gave me a vision for unity in the body, and I, I visit different churches on Sundays, but the church that has placed me in since 20, uh, two years now, it's going on two years in, in September, it's an assembly to God. It's like full circle. And so for you to say that word is just like making my eyebrows um, burn right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're praying. I've been praying into it because, um, and I've got some dear friends who are um, are a part of the Assemblies of God. I used to attend an Assemblies of God church myself. Um, and I have some dear friends here and their churches have been contending for revival for as long as I've known them. And um, as a matter of fact, two of our, uh, that I know of, two of our prayer leaders for this year's gathering for WW3 here in the state of Arkansas are women leaders in the Assemblies of God uh, Church. So there's something about that. I don't fully know what it is, but um, 
just if you all would kind of stick that in your prayer cap as you're as you're praying amen um but those were those were the topics that that we discussed that's like i said no in no way an exhaustive list but i do think that several of those um those topics are general topics that we all need to cover um and then in addition to that will be what what God relays to you for your particular um, state in your region. Amen. So, um, and again, we'll get that list um, to you all, uh, whether by messenger or email or probably email. Dara, did you ask them to send you their contact info or you gave them yours? I think she might I, be. Uh, I'm sorry. Yes, I did. I put in the chat and some of you have already actually texted me what I requested. So I provided mine, but I would love for you to send me yours. Awesome. Awesome. That way we can just, you know, make it easy and, and send you all this, all this information. Amen. Anything else before we close out? Well, as one of my spiritual fathers would say, that be in all. <laughs> um I thank you again for the sacrifice of your time this morning. Um I tried to keep it to an hour. I didn't do too badly. It's it, it was it, it's 11:11. So um we just uh just a wee bit past an hour. So I thank you so very much for for being here, for being a part of this, for hearing God and um and for not being among those who drag their feet. I'm, I'm, as you get to know me, you will come to understand I can be very congenial and, and all of that, but I am very apostolic by nature. You know, I love to laugh and joke and have a good time and be, you know, just a normal girl. However, when it's time to do business for the kingdom, I don't play around. I don't mess around. I'm not one of these. I'm, I'm, I'm one of those, uh, pull up your big girl panties and let's roll kind of kind of chicks okay I don't do a whole lot of petting people and um placating and 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 coddling and all that it's just not in my nature God surrounds me with genteel women who um who can do that and help you and you know pull out the band-aids and all of that but I'm not gonna try to cut folks but at the same time I when it's when it's time to do kingdom business I'm damn the torpedoes full speed ahead amen it's all it's all hands on deck time uh we've had years to be coddled and play around this this ain't that time this is war this is war season and um and we're gonna learn this year god said our our theme is warring with wisdom so we're gonna learn some new things we're gonna learn from each other I'm excited about the things that you all know that I do not. And I love the fact that in the midst of all of this, not only will we carry out this vision of God's, but we will become like iron sharpening iron and we will all come away from this, not only with a whole band of new sisters and new intercessors and new, new prayer partners, um, new friends, you know, but with new skill sets. And I'm excited, I'm excited about that because when I tell you the caliber of women that God is connecting, ooh, Jesus, no joke, it's no joke. And so um, I just honor each and every one of you and I thank you. Yes, Dawn, we will see the turnaround. I, I wholeheartedly agree. And you can call me and pray anytime, sister, because them few little words you spoke set my set my spirit on fire. I'm not kidding. I love the fire on you. I love it. I love it. And uh like my my pastor would say if that didn't set your if that didn't set you on fire your wood is wet. Okay. So <laughs> oh, but I love you all. I thank you so much um for being here. Um remember who do you know? If you think of somebody, if God drops anybody in your spirit, let me know, let Lynette know, reach out to Dara, um, you know, whatever it takes, but let's, let's fill up this, this, this whole map and, um, and move out in this thing. I'm excited. Holler at me if you need me. And that being all, I'm 